Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Ollie, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use an airbrush. If you follow the channel at all, you'll know I've started using this tool more and more. And I'm now getting asked a lot of questions about how to use an airbrush, how do you clean it, what paints can you use, so I thought I'd finally do a video on it. It really isn't that complicated, and the main thing I'm getting is there's a lot of fear in jumping into the airbrush. Well hopefully, I can break that down for you so you feel pretty confident going forward. I'm going to do this in seven steps, starting with the equipment and how to use the airbrush, through to cleaning it, and finally, painting a model to a nice simple standard and something that you guys can do for your first time airbrushing. Part 1. Types of airbrush There are several different types of airbrush. The one I've got here is a dual action gravity fed airbrush, and this is the one I'm going to be using throughout the video because I think this is the one you'll most commonly find in the wargaming industry. There are others and others people use, things like the siphon fed one, this means you put the paint below and the air pressure sucks the paint into the airbrush. You also have a trigger one or like a pistol one that has a trigger rather than the button. But this one here was given to me by the guys at the airbrush company and it is a Sparmax Max 4 airbrush with a 0.4 needle. A really really nice piece of kit and thank you very much for sending it to me. Now what does dual action gravity fed really mean? To be honest it's quite simple. Gravity fed means you put the paint in the hopper at the top here or the little cup and gravity puts it into the airbrush. Dual action is in reference to the trigger. Pushing it down releases the air whilst pulling it back releases more and more paint. The air comes through the bottom and together they atomize the paint and spray it out of the front of the airbrush. And very simply, that's it. Part 2. The equipment. Now these are the things you need and things that I recommend you get for airbrushing. Every single set will come with these three things, although they will be different, you will have an airbrush, a compressor and the hose. The hose is a sealed pipe, meaning it doesn't allow any air to escape. Compressors can be very different. This one here has a knob with one to six in it for my air pressure. Some have a PSI and gauge, some have a tank. All of them will have a needle and this is probably the most important thing about any airbrush. This one is a 0.4 needle, meaning it's relatively thick. I recommend a 0.3 for kind of overall work, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 are for really fine detail things, but do not break that needle because, or bend it even because that is the thing you need. You can take the whole airbrush apart and you will need to do this when you're doing a deep clean. I remember the first time I did this, I had a huge panic attack thinking I'm never going to get it back together, I'm never going to work it out, but if you don't take it apart, then you'll never quite know. But it does come apart very easily, just lots of twisty screws, you don't really need any tools except to get the very tip of the airbrush nozzle off. One other part of the airbrush I should mention is at the back there is a little screw you can tighten up and loosen, and this will restrict how far back you can pull the trigger, meaning it lets less paint into the airbrush. And that brings us nicely onto part 3, paints. This is a question I get probably more than any other and that is what paints do I use and what paints can you use? Really, you can use any paints you like. I have a wide array of paints. I really, really like the Game Air Vallejo ones. They're really nice, they are made for the airbrush. But you can use Games Workshop ones, Citadel ones, Scale 75 are very nice as well. I've got a P3 pot here I quite like to use for my white. And I even have Liquitex which is an acrylic ink. And this is really, really nice for applying zenithal highlights because it's really thin. The main thing you're looking for is the consistency of the paint. Now you'll hear people say, get it to the consistency of milk, make sure it's like thicker than water. What does that really mean? I don't know, it's kind of a personal gauge. Some of these on the back here will say how much water to paint you should add. And getting the Vallejo Air thinner and Vallejo Air flow improver will make quite a difference because they are the things you'll need to thin down your Games Workshop paints and flow improver will help with the thicker pigment things, things like the white and that's why the acrylic ink white is really good. Now we get on to the good stuff, part 4 using the airbrush. To use my airbrush and put any paint through it I will always apply a couple of drops of thinner. This for me lubricates the airbrush and lets it mix a bit better. So this now is some Vallejo surface primer, the back of the thinner says 2 drops to 10 drops of paint. I mix this in the cup on the airbrush but there are plenty of other people who mix it in a separate cup and pour it in. Do get a long bristled brush, something nice and thick and clean and make sure it is clean or it will block your airbrush. Here's a handy tip, block the end of the airbrush and pull the trigger down and backwards and this will help mix the paint in the cup as it creates backflow. A great piece of advice I was given is practice on a piece of paper. You can draw really really fine lines if you practice so do make sure you do this if you go into airbrush because I think it's a great way to learn control. 
you can be really controlled or you can let the paint flow through. So as you pull the trigger back and pull it back further, letting more paint out, the line will get thicker. This one is possibly a tiny bit too thick, the paint I mean, because it's globbing a little bit, but look how accurate it can be from a fair distance with a 0.4 needle, I can even sign my name. On this next sheet, I've purposely thinned the paint too much. I want to show you what happens if the paint is too thin and you apply too much pressure or are too close. The paint will splatter out like this, creating little spider's feet all over the place. Not great for when you're trying to paint your models and really annoying when you're painting a high detailed one and to splatter paint all over it on the final step. Give this a go and see how you get on. Part five is cleaning your airbrush. This is another really common question I'm getting and it seems to be something that's putting a lot of people off. I think the idea of it bunging up all the time and needing constant cleaning is putting a lot of people off using an airbrush, but ultimately it isn't that difficult. Use some airbrush cleaner. I use the Airbrush Vallejo one, but there are other brands out there, but this is the one that works for me. Some other tools I might recommend you get are some tiny brushes. They look a bit like mini toilet brushes. Use these when you're giving your airbrush a deep clean. I have heard some people say they damage the airbrush. I've not had that experience, but see for yourself. And the other thing is like a little spike, and that is great for pulling the paint out of the end of the airbrush when it's all dried up. A final tool is a spray pot or like a dump pot. You stick your airbrush in this, you spray the water or whatever cleaner or fluid you're putting through and it's just somewhere to store it. It has a little filter as well and a, a small plastic cap on it. You stick it in, pull the air back as if you're airbrushing and it just gets rid of anything that's in the airbrush. Stuff like this, dried paint. You'll get this if you leave paint in the cap for too long. Even if you're at mid airbrush session, this will happen. You need to clean that. And also you can get a dirty needle this is just where the paint has set on the needle and it's not being washed off properly. So how do we go about cleaning it? There are two different ways and two different things I do. One is if I'm finishing with the airbrush altogether, I will give it a deep clean. But if I'm still using it and mid-session, pour some water into the top. This can be distilled water. I use tap water, but people use distilled water as well. Pour in that, tip it out. Then you can run it through the airbrush. The water or the paint now is so thinned down, whatever you're using, that it just flows a lot easier and you can now clear the majority of paint from the cup. Do make sure you keep on top of this as you're airbrushing because it doesn't take a lot to bung it up and then it's just annoying. Make sure to wipe and clean out the top of the cup with a bit of tissue, something that's not gonna break apart. If that doesn't quite do the job and doesn't clear everything, run more water through it again. Keep blasting this through. Back wash it like we saw earlier, back flush it. This will pull any paint out of the tip of the airbrush into the pot, which you can then tip out again. Then the final thing you need to do is get the airbrush cleaner. A couple of drops of this. This will make sure it removes anything else that was in there. You can back flush this again. Use this if, you, if the paint is too dry on the inside of the cup. Dip the tissue or whatever it is you're using around and clean the cup. There you can see some of the fumes from that coming through the filter, and that is filtering that out, getting rid of the worst of it. One other thing I might suggest you do is get yourself a dust mask to stop any fumes getting in, get an airbrush booth to, for ventilation if you've got one, or open a door, open some windows, and make sure you're not getting any of these fumes anywhere because they aren't particularly good for you. Now we come on to the coolest part, part six, painting a model. You'll have seen me do this loads of times. What did we say earlier? A couple of drops of thinner just to lubricate the inside of the machine. A couple of drops of the paint. I think they said two to 10. So I'm going to try and do this relatively accurately. Don't worry about getting a couple of thin coats on here because that's what you want to do. Don't worry if your paint's a tiny bit thin. You'll work this out and it'll start to make more sense. Get your long brush, give it a good old stir, give it a good old mix. This is really what we want to do. You can, as I said before, do this in a separate cup and measure it all out. But I just kind of find, I uh, figured out how much I want to do to make it work. Give it a little backflow just to mix the rest of the paint up and then we are good to get painting. Paint going on a model. Hold the airbrush six inches away, maybe a little bit closer and just get thin coats on there. This is a primer. I always prime my models with an airbrush now. You can, of course, still do this with a spray can, but for me, this is the finest and smoothest coat of primer you will get on a model. Don't worry about multiple coats. That's what we want to do. We're going full Duncan here, two thin coats, three thin coats. Just make sure the coverage is nice and even. And there we go. We have a model primed in black. I prime most of my models in black. It will depend obviously on what color the model you're painting is going to be, but we're gonna hit it with a zenithal. And this might be a term you've heard a lot. This is where you light the model from above as if it's the sun. So spray from a sort of 45 degree angle and build this up in thin layers. This is the Liquitex white. White can be a problem paint, which is why you might want to use Flow Improver, but the Liquitex is so fine. 
And here we're going to create light and shadow. This is a very common airbrush technique. I'm gonna over exaggerate this a little bit and make it a bit brighter so you can see the full effect. But keep the dark under those shadows, just spray lightly, put this on. It will go from gray and eventually will tip a white on the end. And that's the model as it looks now. So in those shadows, in those recesses, it's nice and dark. And on the points in the tops of the shoulder pad, it is almost white. Same with the backs of the legs, hit the points where the light's naturally going to hit, because then you can put some color on it. This not only will help you understand the model, understand the light placement, it'll also be nice in this extra stage. Here, I've got pretty thin paint. This is the Airbrush Vallejo Red. The paint is quite thin. We want this transparent because we don't want to blast out any of the shadow work we've done so far. If the paint's too thick, it'll just cover up the shadows. And this is a really, really simple step, simple way to paint your army. Here we've got a Space Marine and you'll see the effects at the end. Yes, the red might be a tiny bit bright, but that's because I've tried to show you how extreme you can go with the shadows. You can do more than this. This is the basic way to paint, but you can add highlights on, you can add shades into the recesses, and, and really make your models pop and add the contrast. And that's what you're aiming for with an airbrush. So easy to paint large models, super fast to paint small models, and super smooth as well. So here we go, kind of a blood angel. Actually, I'm quite happy with the color transition on this. It's too white at the top maybe, but when you start adding some other colors in, you can really start to make these models shine. Now I think I'm gonna finish up with a couple of extra tips, things I normally do. So some extra tips and trips for part seven. The first one being when you're spraying, don't just continually hold it down and pull it back. Do it in short motion, so little spurts of paint rather than long continual ones. The next thing would be if you're not too sure about getting accurate yet and you haven't learned how far away you need it to be, how fine you can get your airbrush, use your thumb as a gauge to so hold your thumb up over the bit you want to spray, spray onto your thumb and you'll see just how fine the edge is and then you can put this onto the part you want to do, the raised parts. And finally, when you've got airbrush cleaner in the pot, get a bit out and stick it in the end of the brush and this will help clean away all the excess around the nozzle, making it easier for you to keep going. So yeah, I think that's about it guys. That's my full airbrush guide. If you've enjoyed it, please do make sure you like, share, subscribe and hit the alarm bell below. Check out all the links if you want some help. There's my Patreon only Discord group down there. Be aware you'll learn and other people do things differently, but whatever you do, make sure you go ahead, have some fun and get practicing. Thanks guys and I'll catch you later.